Making Stuart Model Steam Plant. This is part 54. Removing the old paint from the Stuart S50 steam engine using a solvent. And then, after some time in my ultrasonic cleaner, I repaint the engine and flywheel. Time to leave the workshop for a while and go into the house because my ultrasonic cleaner is on the draining board of the sink in the kitchen. And here it is, sat in the basket, ready to be put into the liquid. The liquid that I use for this job is called Carbiosonic. It seems to remove paint quite well but doesn't damage the metal parts. With the engine in the cleaner, I switched on the ultrasonic part of it. Initially I set the time for 30 minutes and then repeated the process. I'm just going to leave the engine to it, replace the lid and get on with making a curry. I'm not going to show how I made the curry in this video, because I do not want to receive comments from YouTube viewers saying I didn't subscribe to this channel to be shown how to make curry. Here's the curry mixture bubbling away on the stove. I will have some of this today and then put the rest in food containers and I will freeze them to eat at a later date. This is a chicken masala by the way. My kitchen is a bit of a mess and I'm sitting here voicing over this video waiting for a joiner to arrive to fit the skirting boards and door casings in the new extension. Here's a shot of my old Hammond L102 organ, the same type used by Keith Emerson with the band called The Nice. This one was made in the 1960s. Here's a view through the door in the extension, and this is a large tank that holds kerosene for my central heating system. Most of the paint was removed by the action of the solvent and the ultrasonic cleaner. I've refitted the flywheel and the engine feels very stiff, mainly due to the ultrasonic cleaning liquid inside the cylinder and the valve chest. Before I run the engine, I will oil it, but first of all, I need to remove this liquid from inside the cylinder. Best way to do that is just to blow it out with some gentle air pressure. This took a while, and even after I oiled the engine, some of the liquid came out of the exhaust as an emulsion. I spent quite a lot of time wiping away this mess with an old tea towel. Slowly but surely, the liquid started to disappear, and then the engine ran much better. I blow down the exhaust port, remove the last bit of liquid. After this, I pump some more oil into the steam inlet. Surprisingly, it took a while to clear. But after a while, it ran very well, just as it did before I removed the paint. In this clip, you will notice that some of the paint still remains. Most of it's the primer, but there are still some traces of black paint. I will remove all these manually. First of all, I'm wiping away all of the oil residue. I need to remove the crosshead guide bars because there are some scratch marks on top of one of them where the builder had sort of scratched his name into the guide bars. It means nothing, it doesn't look good, so it can go. The letters J-A-W, all followed by full stops, and the date 1974, were crudely scratched into the top of one of the guide bars. To clean up the guide bars, I'm using this principle. I wrap a piece of wet or dry sandpaper around a steel rule. Then I proceeded to rub the guide bar with the writing on it up and down for quite a long time, using some oil as a lubricant. Then I cleaned all of the sides of the part and also the other one. Using this method, it didn't take very long before all the marks on top of the guide bar were removed. If the markings on top of the guide bar had been deeper, I would have used my one inch belt sander to remove the marks. Doing the job at this speed soon took care of the problem. And now both of the guide bars are quite shiny. Recently, a viewer commented and told me that I should get a surface plate. Well, I have one. Here it is, as usual, underneath a load of stuff, and it's round the other side of the bench, and it's very heavy. For lapping any important parts, I would use this, but it's too heavy to carry round to the front of the bench, and the video lighting isn't as good where the surface plate lives. In this clip, I'm unscrewing the crank pin and putting it in a safe place. It's a simple part, but I don't want to lose it and have to make another one, so it went in the red box. I also slackened off the eccentric on the crankshaft, slid out the crankshaft, 
and removed the nut and bolt which held the eccentric rod to the valve fork. And now I've got plenty of room to work so I can remove the rest of the paint, some of which was very thick. I enlisted the help of a wire brush held in my Proxon motor tool. On an S50 all of the bolt heads are cast in as part of the casting. Here, using a needle file, I'm cleaning up the top of these cast-in bolts so that they look like bolts. Some builders of S50s actually machine away these bolts and then drill and tap and fit proper bolts. Personally, I don't see the point of that because none of the bolts are functional, they are all dummies, including the ones on the bearings top caps. The entire bed plate, including the bearings, is all cast as one unit. With just about every trace of the old paint removed, I repainted the engine's bed. I'm not painting the bottom bit green though. This green paint that I'm using is Stuart Green and it's supplied by Phoenix Precision Paints. It's beautiful stuff to use. A Stuart S50 looks like it's a bed plate sat on a box bed, but of course it isn't, it's all cast in one piece. When I paint the bottom part, Stuart Black, it will look like the engine is sat on a black box bed, and that will match the Stuart Double Ten V colour scheme. Now it's time to paint the flywheel. It was black, now it's Stuart Green. Just for a change, in this video I haven't shown the painting process in great detail. What I am showing as a grand finale is a paint drying video. And as an added bonus, I'm even showing me cleaning the paintbrush using some white spirit, which I poured into the cap of the container and when I finish with it, I will throw away the green stuff so it doesn't contaminate the main batch. And that is it for this video. I'll move the brush cleaner out of the way and just leave you with the shot of the paint drying. Happy days. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.